So I recently had a driver on Uber Eats at the time show me his earnings for the week. And it was over $1,300 for a single week of earnings. Now let's compare that to literally really just this past weekend, sprinkled in with a few other days of my own personal driving, where I hit really just at $800 for a single week. And that was on significantly less than full-time hours. So the question for you, and really the premise of this training today, I welcome you to the channel and welcome you to the training today, is can we meet somewhere in the middle of that? $1,000 on food delivery apps and how you can do that consistently on really any food delivery app, right? It's really the big players. It is DoorDash, Uber Eats, let's throw in Grubhub. From my experience, I have seen that earnings on Postmates, maybe not so much. Let me know your own experience down below in the comments. But in this video, I'm pulling four proven strategies that have allowed me to earn really $25 plus an hour. And you're going to see why that number is very important in this training today. So I appreciate you being on the training today. Let me know where you're watching from in the live chat or in the comment section. If you're watching this on the replay, let's just jump right into it. Take a look at this. Let's look at the actual numbers here because I like to bring you actual data when it comes to your earnings so you can understand what is realistic. Caveat here. These earnings today, let's be realistic here. Rhonda, I see you a VIP member on the team. Robert, I see you guys in here. Genesis, Jordan, thanks for being here on the train today. Gotta be realistic for, with you. Let me just jump back here. L listen. The earnings that we're talking about in this training, the strategies that we're talking about in this training, it's not earnings guarantees. You may be thinking, Mike, there's no way. You know, I'm in, I don't know, a small town marketplace. Mike, you got to understand, we got like one McDonald's, we got like a Wendy's, we got Jim's Pizza, which is fire, by the way. Shout out to Jim's Pizza, but you get it, right? This is not earnings guarantees. These are best practices that I feel like if you're in a medium or medium large, large size marketplace, this is going to best set you up to hit this earnings threshold, which again is $1,000. But after driving literally 20 hours last week, I hit 800. 1,000 is 100% doable in my opinion. Firstly, check it out. So this is self-reported data. This is on, I believe we pulled this from Glassdoor, which is a company review site, right? If you work for these companies, you can leave feedback. So looking at driver reported salaries, this is actually for Pennsylvania. I'm coming to you from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania today. I hope you're having a great start to the week wherever you're watching this from. Let's look at some of the numbers here. So, okay, we got Dasher, delivery driver, driver, right? Whenever some of these, this data is self-reported here, you know, it could be called different things, right? Okay. Let's take a look here. So 14 at 16 per hour, we got $17 per hour and 17.31 per hour. I'll just tell you right now, if you're hitting that, you're not going to hit a thousand. I'm going to show you the actual data here in a second of your earnings thresholds per hour and what you need to hit here. But okay, 14 to $17 per hour based on self-reported data of the dashers here in Pennsylvania. Well, let's go a little bit more macro level. What about Uber Eats? This is self-reported data from US Uber delivery drivers. Again, this is reported on Glassdoor. 14.97 an hour. Okay. We got like what? 15 bucks, 17 bucks. Uh, yeah. That was pretty much the mean that we're seeing here for the self-reported income. You got to do better than that. And if you're new here, if this is the first time that you and I are meeting, I started my side hustle in 2015 right here in Pittsburgh with that company, with Uber in the rideshare space. You know, I've driven on most every gig app out there, really food delivery, parcel delivery, grocery, scooter charging, parcel delivery, and yeah, rideshare. So today, again, we're really leaning into food delivery. Look at these numbers, 15 an hour. I'm telling you, it's not going to happen hitting the national mean. You know, I'm sure, let me know if, you, if you've if you seen this, but we've seen self-reported data of these drivers. I mean, not just on Glassdoor, but in the news, right? Nine bucks an hour, $11 an hour, $13 an hour. I gotta be real with you. You know, as a team member, I mean, you're getting the kind of the, 
the deep insight here that others just don't see. I highly feel like if you're hitting $9, $13 an hour, number one, you're doing it wrong. Let's be real here. You're doing it wrong if you're hitting $9 to $13 an hour. Absolutely, in my opinion. And or number two, your marketplace is not the best fit for these gig apps. Someone's got to say it. If you're hitting $9 to $13 an hour, what do they say? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. So if you're hitting 9 to 13 and you're following best practices, there's something that's telling you in the data that this is not a good fit for your marketplace. But I truly feel like most marketplaces, you're going to benefit from the tips today. Number one, tip number one, you need to plan. Now, listen, listen, lean in. If any of these tips seem like, well, I do that. You're not telling me anything new. No, listen to what we're talking about today here. You need to plan around market data, bonus schedules, and more. What do I mean by that? So here's what I do. Data-driven decisions. Say that with, <laughs> say that with me. Data-driven decisions. The data doesn't lie. The data tells a story. Follow the data. Tweak your behaviors by the data. And sure, there's some, you know, uh, hunches, luck in there as well. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. So you're going to plan your shifts around this data. So here's by the numbers. Excuse me. If you're trying to hit full-time hours, $1,000, it's simple math, right? Divided by 40 hours a week, you need to hit $25 an hour. Now, if you're doing this part-time, if you're going to hit 30 hours, your threshold is $33 an hour to hit $1,000 for that week. Did you realize that? Because I didn't. I mean, it's simple. It's simple math, right? But you got to step back and say, what is my threshold? My goal for you, one of the best practices I say is don't drive blind. You need to have earnings thresholds, number one. And I would even break that down from the macro. You know, maybe our macro is I want to hit $1,000. Okay. And then if I asked you, well, how many days you drive? Okay, five. I don't know, right? Okay, well, how many hours a day, right? I mean, look, go back to the numbers here. I drive like eight hours a day, okay? If I'm going to drive 30 hours a week, there you go, 33 an hour. But I know a lot of you have a nine to five. You're juggling. You got a lot of things going on. So do I. We, we all got a lot of things going on. 30 hours is a good amount of hours, especially if you're doing a nine to five. That's a ton of work. Shout outs to you if you're doing that going to have to be even higher than 33 an hour. So there's our numbers. Nextly, you need to understand rushes. Rushes are your breakfast, your lunch, and your dinner rush. You know, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel here. We're trying to optimize these platforms. I always say driving for these platforms, it's not hard. It's what makes it hard. Again, these platforms aren't hard. That's kind of what makes it hard because everyone's out there. Everyone wants to do this. Everyone wants to make money. So you need to optimize, plan your schedule around breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I would start a little bit before one of those rushes, work in and through that rush, and then out of the rush. And then in between the rushes, you have like an hour, an hour and a half. Take your break. Get your lunch. Get your dinner. Stop at home stop your shift, drive later in the evening, whatever works for you, okay? That's how you optimize rushes. Nextly, we need to understand tipping behavior. Hey, if you're getting value in this training today, definitely drop me a like. If you want to go deeper with us, get an inner circle, get real time and first updates, just like our fellow VIPs in the live chat, consider hitting the join button down below and becoming a VIP. I'm going to take a sip of coffee here. Let me know what you're sipping on today. Fantastic. Refueled. Hope you're doing great today. Hope you are crushing your earnings goals. For some of you, this may be a weekend. For some of you, you may be starting your week. Shout outs to you. Okay. Tipping behavior. Understand your consumer's tipping behavior. If I asked you, why do you tip? Like literally, why do you tip? Like in the service industry, anything. Barbers, your waitress, uh, hostess. Uh, whatever, right? Is it good service or is it good, I don't know, what, connection or, or 
Personality, personality, okay? Do you tip because of good service or personality? Research has shown, academic research has shown that the personality or AKA the connection is more so an indicator of why we tip in any niche. How does this translate to you? Again, understand tipping behavior. On apps where the customer can tip after they've received a service from you, like Uber Eats and maybe others. Let me know if Grubhub does the same. I'm kind of newer with Grubhub. Let me know down below in the comments. But now that we know that statistically, the connection to the person influences tips more than service, I would number one, obviously, you know, cover your bases, you know, have the good service, have good drop-offs, have a clean pickup, right? Be succinct. Don't waste time. For me, on the consumer end, whenever I use these platforms as a consumer, if I see the driver stopping off at BP or a gas station, getting a little pit stop, I mean, come on, I still tip. <laughs> I don't know. I, I've worked in customer service. I still tip, right? But I'm kind of like, uh, come on, man. You know, you're, you're making the pit stop. Or if they're multi-apping on you know, different apps at the same time, you can get a contract violation on DoorDash now doing that because you're going to be late. You're going to have an extreme lateness. Keep that in mind if you didn't know that. But if I see the driver going north, there, there you go. You go, <laughs> you go, where are you going? You're driving north, right? I'm down here, right? Or, or wherever it is. Like, what are you doing? I know that they're doing something, <clears throat> excuse me, that they probably shouldn't be doing. Versus the driver, excuse me here. There we go. Versus the driver that is having the good connection with me. Even, I mean, just the little things. Hey, I just want to let you know, it's taking a little bit longer at this restaurant. I'm still waiting. It's really busy, right? Hey, they are out of, I don't know, whatever. They, they told me they couldn't grab an extra whatever it is, okay? They ran out. It's just, it's a humanization. It's the good service combined with the personality of, hey, they care about me, right? Then, or translate this to your customer, statistically, they're more prone to tipping. Finally. Look at this, tipping frequency and proportional pay. What do I mean by that? Frequency, your goal should be 90, I'd say 5% of your customers should tip. My frequency on my data that I track, you can get your own copy for free to track your data. Your drivermic.com under resources, there's a free Excel or numbers sheet for you to track your data. But I've always been 95, 97% of my customers tip. So that's your threshold. Look, look at the data. Again, data driven decisions here. If you're hitting 85% or 80% of your customers are tipping, is there something else? Is there something more you can do? Now, also keep in mind, you know, different marketplaces and demographics are different. Proportional pay. I always aim for, let's say, 40 to 50% of my gross revenue coming from tips. That means I'm getting not only a good frequency of tips, but a good amount of tips. Now, again, going back to that Excel sheet, I've tracked my average tip is a high $4, maybe low $5. So look at that as well. Are you getting like a dollar tips, $2 tips? I mean, let's, let's be real here. Is it, is it like, a, like a sympathy tip, right? Are they, are they tossing you a dollar or two? They may just be doing that because they're nice, right? Not because they, they felt you did a good job. So again, make sure you're covering your bases there. Nextly, understanding your actually factors you can influence. What can you influence on these apps? The base pay, the promotions, and the tips. You can't influence base pay. Base pay is based on you know, time, distance, desirability if you're on DoorDash. You can influence the promotions that you take advantage of, and then we talked about the tips. So the screenshot to the right, Here's how we're gonna get into this. Number two, tip number two, I'm gonna show you in a second, is execute. I'm gonna go through the exact plan of how to execute. But to hit $1,000 a week, you cannot rely on base pay. Let me just, let me just come close and, and deliver this realness, in, in, in my opinion, right? You cannot hit the $33 that I just showed you earlier to whatever it was, I don't know, 38 or you know, whatever it is, $25 an hour. You can't really hit that just on base pay. I'm going to show you some numbers, you know, why, but you need to leverage the promotions and tips. And I'm going to also answer the question of what happens if my marketplace doesn't offer the stellar stuff, the bonuses, right? Well, how do these companies 
offer base pay. Hey guys, I see you in here again, Rhonda. Thanks for being here. Rasheen coming to us from Connecticut, guys. I appreciate you being here. Leviathan making over 50 an hour during that dinner rush shift. That's what's up. I appreciate everyone being here. Again, drop a like if you're getting value in the training today. So this is going to answer the exact question that a lot of you have. And I went digging for this. Uber's got a ton of support pages. And I want to show you this in case you haven't seen it. It's going to answer a lot of your questions. So why am I not receiving promotional offers? This is on Uber, right? Listen to this. Promotions change each week and offers vary by city and driver. Promotions are offered based on rider trends and app usage in your city. Promotions are offered during times and in places where we expect riders to request more trips since rider behavior changes during the day, et cetera, et cetera. Now, uh, you may be thinking that's ride share. It is. It also pertains to Uber Eats as well if you look at this website. You can just type this in, you know, if you want to, if you want to pull it up yourself. But again, the first part, promotions do vary by city and more importantly, I think the aha moment, let me know if this is new, it does vary by driver. Did you know that? It does vary by driver. For instance, you know, I'm driving here on Uber Eats, let's say, here in Pittsburgh. My twin brother, Matt, he just launched a new channel, by the way. It's Your Driver Team Matt, and it's an extension of the Your Driver Mike brand. Check it out. Again, it's Your Driver Team Matt. Definitely subscribe. He's uploaded uh, two new videos, new videos every Thursday there. But we have different promos. Isn't that crazy? He's literally like 15 minutes away, 10 minutes, whatever. He's getting different promos in the same marketplace. And let's look at DoorDash. This may be actually be in the different in the DoorDash. I think it is. So for DoorDash, they say, now this, this is pertaining to challenges. This is your batch bonuses. Challengers are sent to Dashers based on additional criteria other than geographic location. New Dashers, long time Dashers. So if you did not get notified of a certain challenge, there may be a different one for you later on. Challenges, again, are batched bonuses. You know, complete 10 deliveries, we'll give you an extra 20 bucks, whatever it is. That's a batched bonus, aka a challenge. So lean in. Again, DoorDash is saying that it's not just based on where you're at. It's based on if you're a new dasher or a long-time dasher. So here's a tip for you. Here's a power tip to, or for you to make more money. I see in the comments, I see your questions, and, and you ask, you know, hey, um, I always drive on DoorDash. And they used to offer me, I don't know, challenges, let's say peak pay, which is a per delivery bonus. They always offer me like, you know, two, three dollar peak pay. They always offer me a $20 challenge or whatever it is. And then they stopped. Why is that? Well, I mean, again, like these companies say, it changes by driver and, you know, different factors if you're new or if you're an experienced driver. Here's what I would do. If, they're stop, if they stop giving you bonuses, I would stop driving for a little bit if you can. Again, I understand you have obligations, but what I have seen since 2015, sometimes, again, there's no earnings guarantees. I'm not guaranteeing this stuff's going to happen. But if you stop driving, if you break the pattern, if they know Mike drives every Friday to, Saturday, to Sunday, you know why, do, why would we need to offer a bonus? Mike, he's driving every weekend. So what incentive do we have as a company to give him more money during the busiest times he drives anyway? But if you drive less, if you skip a weekend, two weekends, three weekends, you might see that they'll start offering you bonuses again. It's a give and take. It really is. You need to see, okay, you know, if I'm going to do that, if I'm going to stop driving for a certain app, am I going to make at least as much money on the other app, right? Because obviously then you'd be losing money just to get a, a bonus later on, just to break even. I hope you understand that. But again, look at the data for that. Let's move on. Number three, executes. Number three, okay, here is where we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of how do I do this when I'm on the road. Drop a like again, take a sip of coffee here. Appreciate it. I see you guys in the training today.
Okay, let's get on the road uh, because, again, let me just tell you that this past weekend here in Pittsburgh, I tackled that Quest Challenge on Uber Eats that I just showed you. It was 60 deliveries in just three days for an additional $315. That is on top of any surge, on top of any tips. I don't see boost. Again, promotions vary based on driver. I think it's crazy. I would like to see boost Uber Eats, but I never see boost at all. Anyway, so I look for a video on that tomorrow, a complete breakdown and more videos on that because I think it was a very important shift on that exact quest bonus. If I hit it, if I got the 315, best practices, et cetera. But you're going online with a DoorDash, Grubhub, or Uber Eats, let's say. Let's execute. How are we going to actually play this out to earn the hopefully $1,000 per week? So this is a batched bonus strategy. Now, the batched bonus strategy is going to differ than your per delivery strategy. So if I was doing, let's say, a per delivery strategy, right, I just want to make as much money as possible on my next order, right? There's tons of videos. Most every video on the channel, I talk about the dollar smile ratio, trying to get, you know, the shortest miles for the highest pay. Best practices, again, to maximize tips and take advantage of bonuses. Here, we're going to leverage these batched bonuses specifically. So, well, I guess there's a spoiler on the right picture. <laughs> if I hit that bonus, I did. There you go. It's a, there's a spoiler already. But here we're going to shift from the dollars to mile to orders per hour. Again, if you're going for a challenge or a batched bonus, we're going to shift from the dollars to mile strategy to the orders per hour strategy. What do I mean by that? We're going straight volume. We're going volume to hit this batch bonus. So on average, if you didn't know, you can really complete two to three orders per hour. And yes, I understand different marketplaces, right? If you're delivering downtown, et cetera, I get that. Generally, with a vehicle, two to three orders an hour. For batched bonuses, I'm aiming at four plus, if possible, an hour. Why? So I'm not spending the same amount of time or more just to hit this bonus because what is that going to do if, if i spend more time on the road trying to hit this bonus i mean my hourly it's going to basically be the same as a per delivery bonus so there's no benefit to doing a match bonus versus just driving and taking smart singular orders I hope that makes sense here with the bat leaning for those listen to this listen to this the the power with a batched bonus is i can make the same or more money, in my opinion, you probably will make more money if done right in less time. Let me say that it lean in, that's that's massive. Hope you're getting value in this. Is in my opinion, when done right with the best practices, in an ideal scenario, you can make the same or more money on a batch bonus in less time. And that's what I did significantly in this weekend's driving. So, how do we do this, right? Let's do a breakdown of a single order, a per delivery bonus versus a batch bonus. So our order to the right is an example of just simply looking at the dollars to mile ratio. Okay, how much am I getting paid for the miles driven? I of course wanna look at positioning and how much time it's taking to complete, right? But I'm looking at other things when it comes to the batch bonus. The batch bonus, I just want to complete as many deliveries as possible, as fast as possible, so I can get that extra pay. I'm not worried as much of the dollars to mile ratio. What am I worried about? Again, the orders per hour. So you can see the dollars to mile is 224 on the single order. It's 316 on this batched order. Great. It's higher actually in this case, but I don't really care about that. This is what I care about, the orders to hour ratio. So on this single order, right, it's 37 minutes to complete. Based on that, in 60 minutes, I could complete, you know, what, 1.62 orders in that hour, assuming I get another order immediately. 
which I have seen Uber Eats throwing me pretty order, uh, throwing me orders pretty quickly. So I think that'd be doable. Versus this bashed order request, it's a stacked order indicated by the number two. So we'll have, you know, two or more assignments for one driver. 27 minutes for two orders. Now, based on that number, I can hit 4.44 orders an hour given the same thresholds. That's what I want to go for. Why? Because again, I've checked off two orders. If I check off four orders in an hour, boom, there you go. If I'm trying to hit 30 orders for the quest, I've already done four versus in that same hour, I'm just going to do what? 1.62 or maybe two orders in that same hour, which means again, I got to drive more. So the per order payout nextly is this. So obviously it's a single order payout. It's 1366 on the order to the left. Now there are typically surge bonuses that is the per delivery bonus on Uber Eats. And again, doesn't matter if this is challenges on DoorDash or Grubhub, whatever, it's, it's the same thing. So the one order is 1366. And then the bashed order, it's actually going to be 1031 per order. Why? Because the quest that I was driving on, the 60 orders for $315, we get to add $5.25 per order. Because that's, you know, that's what it calculates to. 315 divided by 60 deliveries, it's a 525 bonus. So take $10.11, right, divided by two, because there's two orders there, and then add 525. That equals 1031 per order. So now, again, we're making 1031 per order for literally 27 minutes. That's crazy. You just made, what, 2062 in 30 minutes versus 1366 for 37 minutes. Now, it's not always going to be, you know, this uh, much of a standout. What do I mean by that? So... Again, the bashed bonus order here, it, it's, the, it's the most ideal order that I drove this past weekend, okay? I want two orders for around 40 minutes or less. That was my threshold because, again, you know, going back to the numbers here, I want to get ideally four orders per hour. So look at that. Again, I'm, I'm hope, re, I would rewatch this, and after this training, there'll be time codes down below in the description. Uh, because I'm hoping that that makes sense to you. But in short, take as many orders as possible because you got the bonus. You can make more money in less time when done right with bash bonuses versus the single order payouts. And ideally, both are going to have bonuses there. So again, I hope that makes sense there. So nextly, our next word tip what? Number three, optimize around your marketplace. Again, if you're getting value in the training today, definitely drop me a like. I know you're busy out there. I know you're watching this maybe in the background, what have you. If you can just take one second to drop a like if you're getting value in the training today, I really appreciate it. And again, if you do wanna join our inner circle, consider clicking that join button down below. If you can't see that, you're probably on a mobile. You can just jump over to a laptop or a computer and join our inner circle where we post exclusive content you get membership badges, emotes, and more. Not required, of course. I appreciate you just as well. Another sip of coffee. Hope you're doing well today. All right, we're back. And let's talk about optimizing around your marketplace. Because I hear you. I mean, I know. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, it's like, Mike, you know, not all of this works in my marketplace. Um, that may be good for Pittsburgh, but, you know, I'm in wherever. I got to tell you, I've done the same thing in San Diego, California. San Diego is like three times the size of Pittsburgh, and it worked in both marketplaces. You got to optimize for your marketplace. As long as, you're, as long as you're not in a tiny marketplace, in my opinion, this will work. If you're in a really small marketplace, I get it. You know, I, I drove through smaller marketplaces on my move from San Diego back to Pittsburgh. So I get it. You know, if you just have you know a couple of uh, square miles in your marketplace, and, and again, I, I would still look at the data there. So, 
Here's how you're gonna optimize. Now you understand the batched bonus strategy versus the per delivery bonus strategy. We've planned around market data and trends. Now you gotta optimize for your own marketplace. Okay, so you're online, you're driving, you're trying to hit these bonuses. Here's what I do. You know, I again I drove this past weekend. Look for the video tomorrow. It's gonna be massive, massive value, specifically talking about that quest bonus, how I did it, and even more best practices. Okay, number one, you gotta to adapt to your power strips. Those are areas of dense restaurants. And your goal should be ping pong requests. So remember when we talked about the order comparison, right, with the left versus the right orders, that was assuming you're gonna get an order immediately. That's a ping pong request. How do you get orders immediately? You ping pong to different power strips. It is simply how these apps work. These apps work of, you know, usually proximity. Obviously where a restaurant is, you know, if you get pulled out super far to the rural areas of your marketplace, I mean, where is it going to pull from? It's smaller plazas. You got to stay in the dense, busy power strips. Now, I mean, I've, I've gotten pulled away. You know, I mean, this past weekend, every shift, you're not going to be able to ping pong from power strip to power strip all the time. Now, Matt does a pretty good job of this, staying in one central zone. Again, you got to optimize to your own marketplace. I mean, do you have enough volume where you can do that? Back in San Diego, I had to do some driving. My dollars to mile payout was less in San Diego. It's more spread out. You know, I know the Florida marketplace, Texas, some of these marketplaces, there are larger zones, right? DoorDash covers, Uber Eats covers a much wider zone. So you may have to do some driving. But again, I mean, you'll see the miles in the order request. So take a look at that. So cold areas and restaurants, it's kind of like what I just talked about. It's okay. Think about this. If I do get pulled away from my power strips, where do I want to get pulled to? So if I'm getting pulled away to a rural area, that's not always a bad thing because if I know that I can drive to a hot zone, at least somewhere that I can get a request, that's okay. Versus if I get pulled away to the middle of nowhere, I know I'm going to have some community miles there. Multi-apping, it is driving on different apps at the same time and choosing the best request for you. Caveats, please, caveats, listen to this. It does, it does not mean accepting requests at the same time on different apps because you can get, again, contract violations on DoorDash specifically. And at the very best case scenario, you'll have pretty much upset customers like I just told you about when I see you driving completely away from my destination because you're picking up an Uber Eats, but I ordered on DoorDash. I'm, I'm like, like, what are you doing, right? It's gonna lead to a bad customer experience. You're probably gonna hurt yourself in the long run, getting less tips, a lower rating. I know a lower rating doesn't really matter anymore, but I mean, you wanna earn as much money as possible. Don't hurt yourself with tips. Now, again, you can multi-app and drive on different platforms at the same time, okay? You can be online with as many apps as you want at the same time. That is different than accepting apps on different platforms at the same time. If I get a request on you know, Uber Eats, I would pause another platform or I would go offline, whatever you need to do, right? Depending on the platform. Okay, our last point there, what do you do if you are ahead of pace, behind pace? So driving this past weekend, my, this is, please, please. <laughs> I, I kind of, I, I stopped myself because I realized how important this is. Listen to this. What was tip number one? Tip number one was the plan, right? So I talk about having an earnings threshold. Before I even went online, it started on Friday. The promo ended on Sunday night, technically Monday morning. I knew 60 deliveries, it's, I mean, right? It's simple math, right? 20 deliveries a day. And then knowing my marketplace, which is this tip right here, optimizing, I knew, okay, 20 deliveries a day, two to three deliveries an hour, 
ideally four deliveries an hour, because that's what I want you to do on a batch bonus strategy. I knew, okay, I got to drive at least six hours. That was my goal. Six hours a day, I think I could hit 20 deliveries in six hours. Versus if I just, you know, was on my standard strategy, if I treated it like a per delivery bonus, I would probably be driving eight hours to do the same amount of deliveries, okay? Because I just wanted those stacked orders. So if I am behind pace, then I was even more critical of the orders coming in. I got to get something like 35 minutes for two orders. Ideally, under 30 would be you know super good. I didn't see a lot of those, but certainly not 60 minutes for two orders because that's normal, right? I see the ping come through. 60 minutes estimated time for two deliveries. I saw it's like 70 minutes, 72 minutes, even like 48 minutes. I'm like, oh, I, I want to be faster. I want to be faster. You know, give me an order that's like 40 minutes, 38 minutes for two deliveries. But I also thought, hey, if I wasted too much time waiting on orders, it's going to take the same amount of time because 40 minutes just turned into 50 minutes because I waited for 10 minutes trying to get that 40 minute order, right? So don't be too, too picky. Now, if I'm ahead of pace, right, then it's just up to me to think, okay, how much energy and focus do I have? Let's tackle this question. If you're ahead of pace of your bonus, if you have the energy and focus, I would keep going. I would keep going. You know, if you're driving six hours and I hit my 20 deliveries, if you want, yeah, keep going. Now, I we, we haven't really talked about this before in the channel. I'm not a big fan. I'm not a fan of overdoing it. Okay. A lot of these apps, well, you know, all of them really, they legally have to cap you out at 12 hours a day. I'm not a fan of driving at all 12 hours. You know, eight, sure, nine, sure. I'll tell you. You know, again, on my move here from San Diego to Pittsburgh, you know, I'm driving. I drove the Passat, packed up with stuff, and I drove eight, nine hour days to get here cross country. And, you know, I hit some weather. There, there were some delays. And there was a day where I drove 10 hours. And I'll tell you, it was too much. <laughs> I'll be real with you. It was too much for my focus and fatigue. I was safe. Don't worry. But after 10 hours, I mean, I was so tired. It was too much. My body telling me it was too much. So I'm not a fan. Do not. Well, I mean, you can technically, but I'm not a fan of driving 10 hours, 11 hours, 12 hours a day. It's too much, in my opinion. But if you can safely do so, if you have the energy, if you're ahead of schedule, then I wouldn't be afraid to keep going. Again, keep an eye on your focus and your energy there. I think that's a big thing that, I mean, really gets ignored as well. I'll leave you with this before we get into tip number four. It's I would not ignore the mental health. I mean, we could do a whole stream or video on this. I would not ignore your mental health. You know, I know you got a lot of things going on. If you got bills, you're trying to pay off a credit card, you got a family, yeah, trying to save up for a big purchase. I, I get it. You know, I've driven for these apps both part time and full time. Um, Again, it's, it's one of those things that I know you have the earnings goals. I know you have stressors. I mean, hey, I've been there. I've been, I've literally had negative. <laughs> I mean, well, let's be real here. You're part of the team if you're not subscribed right now. But I mean, I've had scenarios last year when, or maybe it was a year prior, I'm trying to remember back in San Diego, where I literally had negative dollars in my bank account. Let's be real here. I had negative dollars in my bank account because the company that I was working for went under, did not have the money to pay their employees. And you know, you have to keep up with your bills, right? So I, I turned to these apps at the time at full time. You know, now I'm doing it part-time. And you know, I try to optimize these apps to help you make as much money as possible. But I've been there. I get the distressors. I've been at the place where I'm at the gas station, literally, you know, looking at how much money I had in my bank account, I had five bucks in there. But I, I was thirsty, you know. You gotta swallow the, the the cost and just be like, I need the gas. I need the gas to drive. So I've been there, and you know, I'm lucky to do this. I'm lucky to optimize and, and to look at these platforms and try to optimize your earnings. So I pre I really do appreciate you being here, and I've been there. But I understand all of that. 
to bring to land the plane on, on that point is still take care of your mental health. Don't overdo it. You know, don't drive the 12, but don't try to game the system to drive more, you know, because I, I know it's going to make an extra 60 bucks, whatever it is, but I mean, you're going to crash. Your body's going to crash. So I definitely want you to take care of yourself. And uh, tip number four here, I hope you got value in that. Tip number four there, it's add. Add, add, add. What do I mean by that? Topping off your deliveries. Simply put, topping off your delivery. So remember, uh, tomorrow we're going to talk about this quest bonus. I already gave you a spoiler alert on that, but we're really going to do a deep dive on it. So three trips left. 57 out of these 60 trips needed to hit the $315 extra. Once you get to this point, either on your earnings threshold for the day, for the week, the month, you know, whatever, right? Or to hit your threshold for the quest bonus, simply just, just top it off, okay? Then I feel like it's okay to shift back to the dollars to mile strategy, okay? For these last three deliveries, right? Or you need to make an extra 50 bucks to hit your threshold, excuse me, Then I would shift your strategy back to, eh, you know, dollars to mile is fine. Because now I want to make, yeah, if I can make eight bucks a mile, if there's some great surge or some uh, peak pay, then yeah, I would shift my strategy back. And that's what I did. You know, I was getting close. I had plenty of time in the day. You can see the screenshot was taken from 5 p.m. on Sunday. I had plenty of time in the day to hit, the, obviously, right, the three deliveries. But just, just do some top off deliveries, right? Now you can start to come down, you can relax, you put the grind in, you put the deliveries in, and then you can take deliveries based on positioning, ideal restaurants, and or the single bonus pay versus the batched pay, right? Because you're clearly going to hit the threshold. So I mean, tons of value. I hope you got tons of value. What I want you to do now, your next step, if you got value in this training today, uh, definitely consider sharing it with somebody if you did get value. And again, there's a lot of resources in our VIP section. There's resources all over this channel. You don't even need to be a, a, be a VIP, but if you want to go deeper, definitely consider joining. And yeah, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. This channel, my goal for you this year is just to make you money, you know? I feel like uh, it's always asked, you know, you know what, what do you do? What do you do here? You know, my goal on the channel is just to simply help you make money. If I could just whittle it down to, to a single sentence. Sure, I help you in the gig economy, your side hustle, your full-time hustle, different revenue streams. That's kind of the new uh, catchphrase or slogan mission statement on the channel here. But I just want to help you make money. You know, and looking at some of these side hustle apps, you know, you can, some of these are full you know, full hustle, full-time hustle apps, but you know, which ones are worth it and emphasize, emphasizing, excuse me, the different revenue streams as well. Because I mean, that's really my goal for you this year is to build out the multiple revenue streams. If you really want to build financial security, I think that's a big thing here. So if you got value in this training, definitely drop me a like right now. If you got a value in this, consider sharing it with someone as well. And you can also click or tap screen here for my newest video, as well as a video recommended for you. And I'll see you in the next one.